Okay, do we have audio now? Let's find out. Okay, do we have audio now? Let's find out. Okay, that sounds like we do. Okay, do we have audio now? Let's find out. Okay, that sounds like we do. Okay, let me turn this down. Okay. Welcome back to my studio. What's up, everybody? Today we're going to be learning some airbrushing and we're gonna start off by doing the percentage dots that you know everybody tells you to do so we're gonna start off trying to make a 100% dot getting in front of the camera so that's not good I'm gonna have to move mm -hmm. let's see if I can tilt this a little this way maybe that'll help okay so now that was our 100% dot now we're gonna try and do it a little lighter tougher than it looks, you know. I'm going to turn the pressure down a little. That might help. Okay. So. Okay, well, not as easy as it looks. Let's see. Okay, try again. Build it up slowly. So what we're trying to do here learn to put down only the amount of paint we need. We want it to be a soft gradient. We want it to get lighter as it goes. Yeah, that's not so bad. Okay. So, now, let's go for some smaller dots. I'm using double actioning. That's what they call it. When you push down, you pull back for paint. Push down for air. Okay, so this is where my mic went out. So everything from this point on is post-recorded. Obviously, since the mic cut out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of myself over there so that doesn't confuse you. And we're going to just focus on the main painting surface area. What I'm doing in the video is called distancing. You're using your hand as a measurement to keep your hand with the airbrush in it at a precise distance from your surface. Obviously you can tell I'm not very good at it, but I'm getting better. My main problem seems to be so far that I'm a little too aggressive with the trigger. The air is fine, but I seem to be pulling it back too far and letting out too much paint. So I try and thin things out and ease back a little on the trigger. 
I get some slightly thinner lines. So now I've moved on, and instead of going with gradually fading dots, gradients, I'm trying to do precise dots. I'm trying to do the same dot over and over and over again. This is again an exercise in control. I'm doing everything I can here to try and keep everything exact. I want pinpoint accuracy in the amount of paint I'm putting down. I'm not putting down heavy lines of paint or heavy dots of paint in this case. This time I'm putting down light dots. Now, in order to try and gain a little bit more control, I'm going to practice putting small circles around those dots I just made. Making a circle is not an easy thing to do with an airbrush. With a pen, no problem. But airbrushes are large, the hose hangs down, they move funny, you gotta keep them at the right angles. So it makes these little moves and these little patterns a little hard to do. So moving on, now I'm trying to do some dotted lines. Moving dots, as they say. You'll notice almost every line I put down is a little bit wavy. When I try and do the solid lines or the dotted lines, you know, your pulse can make your hands shake a little. And every little shake is going to translate th through that airbrush. Now, if you want a softer line, You can, if you want a softer line, you can pull it back a little bit away from your surface. So now, okay, let's move on. We're going to try the burgers. Basically what a burger is, is an exercise that you want to make a gradient that fades upwards and then a gradient that fades downwards. You want to leave a little bit of white space in the middle. They're supposed to be rounded. I'm pointing the bottoms of mine. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It's all about practice and exercising your hand because you want to get that muscle memory. You want to know where the trigger needs to stop in order for you to get the amount of paint you want. You start by laying down a thick line and slowly pulling away and releasing your paint trigger to lighten as you go. Now this next example, I made a curved line and then I'm trying to gradient away from that line to make it a nice soft line on one side but sharp and crisp on the other. These are the things you want to practice over and over and over again. You know, can you make a solid line? Can you make a line that fades into itself, becomes darker as it goes?
See, with a little distancing and a little bit more practice and a little bit more speed, you know, your lines get smoother. And that's what you want. You want to feel the airbrush and the paint getting smoother as you practice. So here I'm just trying to shoot in a couple of dagger strokes. Dagger strokes, you know, they start wide, they end thin. You do dagger strokes because you're going to want some lines to come to a point. Not every line needs to be a dot. Dagger strokes are very important to the training process. And this is something you're going to want to really get good at. You're going to want your muscle memory sharp for this kind of exercise. I made the giant S just to make sure things weren't clogged and to get a little feel for the curving of the airbrush. With the hose hanging down, it feels awkward in my hand. I'm not used to that yet, but I'm getting there. And then, you know, I did my initials the way I usually do them on paintings, just to see if I could basically. Now right now I'm just jumping around. The things I feel like I need to do more, I'm doing more. So again, I'm back to making dots. A dot is basically what an airbrush does. You make a dot, or you make a dot that moves. Coming down to the bottom here, you can see, well, I'm doing a, a fanning stroke. If a dagger stroke comes to a point, a fanning stroke gets wider as it goes up. You want to start close, and you want to angle it away from you and pull back as you go up. And then, just for the hell of it, I put a few more dagger strokes in between those fan strokes. Just trying to find different ways of practicing the same thing. More dots. Dots, dots, dots. Dots are important. I'm going to say that over and over again. Get used to it. Dots are important. Now, what I'm doing in this spot is what they call the figure eight pattern. It's really just waving your hand around slowly with only a little bit of paint coming out in a way to build up textures in your drawings, paintings. Moving on, trying to get a nice circle. And then I'm going to try and fill it in and give it a little bit of three dimension. It's obviously not the best I could do, but it's good for a beginner. These are the things you want to practice and learn. I am a beginner with this device. I am not an expert. I am not giving you my opinions on how this is to be done. I'm letting you know what I'm doing in order to learn. I just did a few more circles around dots. I'm trying to get used to that I to that idea 
of getting my hand to move in a circle in a different way than I'm used to. You know, when I make a circle with a pencil, I'm basically just putting the pencil on the paper and I'm moving my whole arm from the shoulder in a circular motion. I'm not using my wrist, I'm not using my elbow, it's all in from my shoulder. And when you paint with an airbrush, you are doing the same thing, but you're moving your shoulders vertically in a circle rather than horizontally in a circle. And it's a completely different feeling that you have to get used to. Moving on, I'm going to do a little bit of like the script E curly cues that people do. When you do these, what you're trying to do is first get them to be the same thickness throughout. You want to go from one end to the other, making these little curly cues and keeping them all the same density of paint, the same darkness of color. And then on the second try, down below, you'll see that what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to start with a little bit of paint, and I'm trying to get the paint thicker as I reach the apex of each curly cue. Thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner. thinner. That's what we're trying to do. As I continue here, I'm just looking at things that are already there on the on the paper, on my surface, and I'm just playing with them. I'm trying to give them a little bit of dimension, I'm trying to see if I can darken certain sides of them, just trying to figure out how to control the airbrush and the air and the paint. I make another circle with another dot, I make another circle shadowed on the bottom, highlighted on the top. Going back in, I'm doing some lines. I'm still trying to learn the distancing. Distancing is important if you want to be precise. You know, eventually you can learn to do it without using your other hand or using your pinky and sticking it out like that, like you're drinking a cup of tea. But at the beginning, it's good to practice this way. It teaches you how to feel where that spacing is. Okay, I'm pretty much done with this paper. I've saturated it pretty thoroughly and covered almost all of it. So I'm just going to flip it over, give myself a new surface to work on. We're just practicing. We're not making art here, so it really doesn't matter. Throw a piece of tape on the bottom of it, and pick up my airbrush, and let's get back to work. I'm going to start here by doing like a star shape. Kind of, sort of. I'm doing dagger strokes, or at least I'm trying to do dagger strokes. You can see that some of them are coming to points, and some of them aren't. I'm not moving closer as I get towards the end of the stroke, and I'm not letting off of the paint enough as I get towards the end of the stroke. These are the things we're practicing. Trying to get better overall at these different kinds of strokes. This kind of a pattern, you know, you can learn to do this for like stars in the sky or in a space scene or fireworks, you know. These are the kind of things you can do. Moving on, still trying to figure out how to do these circles. Circles are hard. I'm probably going to say this a hundred times. Circles are hard. Filling in the circle, trying to give it some dimension, not that hard. So here I tried to draw 
basically a heart. This was actually filmed on Valentine's Day, so, you know, you couldn't escape hearts no matter where you went. So I'm just going to try and make a heart and give it some dimension. Soften the edges, try and figure out where my light highlights are. And then fill it in slowly. You can layer the paint as much as you want. Going from light to dark. You don't have to in any way just fill it in one shot. We're not painting a car. We're not going for perfect coverage. We're trying to achieve a level of shadowing that is acceptable. As well as muscle memory, we're also trying to train our eyes to see the amount of paint we're putting down and get used to the feeling and the sight of what you're actually doing. So that heart wasn't great. Let's try an apple. Or an apple-ish shape. Again, I'm not really super good at this and everything has a learning curve everything absolutely everything in this world has a learning curve now for some reason on the screen everything is coming out a little bit darker than I would have liked it to it isn't as dark as it seems in real life the circle that I just did the apple looking thing that I just did is mostly like a gray color with a black outline but on the screen as you can see it mostly looks black with just a white highlight and doing the box I obviously I obviously am letting out too much paint when I start and stop my lines I gotta get used to that flicking the paint off. That's where I'm having my most problems. At least in my opinion. Now for this box I'm trying to give it a little bit of a 3D look. So, I'm making the side closest to us out of the light, so I'm going to try and give that the darkest amount of shadow. I'm layering it slowly, building it up. Right now, it looks like a nice charcoal gray going into a darker black towards the bottom. On the side, I'm trying to keep it a lighter, like a smoke gray to a charcoal gray. Doesn't really look that way on the video. I can't help that. These live streaming cameras, they're not the best things in the world. Again, I'm going to try another circle. A little ball, give it a little drop shadow on the ground. We're just trying to learn we're just trying to learn the effects here. I've often said that for painting or drawing water or ice or glass that you're not really painting what you see but you're painting the illusion of what you see. You're faking that transparency and that's what I'm trying to teach myself to do here but with the airbrush now moving on I'm going to try and outline a basic skull shape I want to layer the outside a little bit 
and I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to try and not have that harsh outline on this drawing. As you can see, this is a terrible skull. You are a horrible skull. You should go home. What I'm basically doing is just doodling. I'm doodling with the airbrush. What do I want darker? What do I want lighter? You know, there's a reason why a lot of airbrush artists use stencils. Because stencils help a lot. And it speeds up the process immensely. You know, you take a stencil of a skull, throw it down on your surface, spray it a little bit in the right areas, and you have your outline, your shape, everything's ready to go. But it's important to learn freehanding. If you can't freehand, you can put down all the stencils you want and you'll never be able to finish them. This is why we practice. Now that I've basically got my outline and my shapes down, I'm going to try and give it some shading. When, when I'm doodling and I'm working on the fly, I know that I have a tendency to screw up my light sources. I sometimes forget which direction I wanted my light coming from. For this, I assume I was going for top left coming down towards the skull coming down towards the skull and leaving shadow on the towards the bottom right side. It's not great, but it'll do. Next, I'm going to try a cylinder. What I'm actually drawing is like a D battery. You remember batteries, right? The ones that came out of devices. And, yeah, never mind. So I'm just slowly working the layers of the paint. Trying to give it that rounded look. Adding a little drop shadow. See, I remembered this time where my light was coming from. So I can put the shadow down there. And putting the shadow down there will also help you to gauge how dark you would actually want the cylinder to be. Again, doing another circle, just trying to make everything have that three-dimensional look. And I know I keep saying this, but the video is really not doing the shading justice. It looks much darker than it does on the paper. Most of the things I'm doing are shades of gray, and on this they're just looking all black. I can't help that maybe my lighting's wrong, and I'll have to work on that for my next live video. But this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. We're layering, 
we're practicing, we're going for shapes, my circles are getting better as I go, my shading still needs some work, I'm back to the battery, giving it a little bit more dimension. I added plus and minus signs to the paper because, well, who the hell's going to know that's a battery? This might make it a little bit more obvious. You know, I'm not really being too exact with anything. I'm just kind of like letting my mind wander and doing what I think I need more work on as I go. I threw a couple of lines in there, a couple of curved lines, a couple of dagger strokes. Doing a little texturing patterns. Can I make smoke? Can I make fire? Can I make you know, a reflection in water. These are the things that are running through my head at the time, and I'm just trying to make it go. Okay, I'm going to take a little break here because my hand, my finger is getting a little tired. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I do plan on doing another one sometime soon. I think we're, I'm going to try and focus on cloth in that one. So, let me know what you think. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. You know the drill. And I'll see you next time. Peace. See ya.